Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup with all the goals from all the games in the Cinch Championship League 1 and League 2. On this week's show, Louis Moult steals the show for United at Gayfield. Cammy Clark's cracking free kick gets Sterling off the mark. And Conor O'Keefe's double helps Peter Head return to winning ways. The 23-24 league campaign kicked off at Gayfield on Friday evening, with newly relegated Dundee United making the short journey to our broth. United got off to the perfect start when Glenn Middleton fired them into the lead after 11 minutes. Our broth midfielder Joao Baldi gave the ball away in the middle of the park, allowing United to counter-attack, with Louis Mould sliding Middleton in for a fine finish. Matthew Cujo would double United's lead just 14 minutes later. Louis Moult once again the provider, with Cujo providing a fabulous chipped finish. With technique like that, Cujo could well be a key player for the Terrors this season. United went close to finding a third shortly after. Craig Sibbles curling effort crashing off the crossbar before going behind. But Sibbles would get his name on the score sheet on the 37th minute. He latched on to a Louis Moult flick on before dispatching coolly beyond Derek Gaston. Three nil and United showing no signs of a relegation hangover. Having laid on the first three, it was only right that Louis Moult would add his name to the score sheet. The Englishman scored Dundee United's fourth on the stroke of half time, timing his run to perfection to lash home a beautifully disguised pass from Cujo. Moult already looks as though he could be one of the signings of the season in the championship. United continued to threaten in the second half this Scott McMahon effort crashing the post. But the damage was done in the first 45 minutes. 4-0 the final score and United off and running for the 23-24 campaign. Four Hill served up a thriller on the opening day as Partick Thistle hosted Wraith Rovers. The Jags took an early lead through Jack McMillan. He bundled the ball over the line after Kerr McEnroy's initial effort came back off the crossbar. McMillan once again showing he possesses quality at both ends of the pitch. Thistle went close to doubling their lead shortly after, with this close-range McEnroy effort going agonisingly wide. McMillan came close to doubling both his and his side's tally, this effort from inside the area narrowly shaving the crossbar. Thistle would double their lead before the break, Kerr McEnroy's slice shot flew into the path of Aidan Fitzpatrick, who turned home from inside the six-yard box. Fitzpatrick picking up right where he left off at the back end of last season. Rovers looked to hit back in the second half, Callum Smith's dipping effort cracking the top of the crossbar. Tommy Adeloy went close to making it three for the home side, only denied by a strong save from Kevin Dubrovsky. Wraith managed to pull a goal back on the 83rd minute. Dylan Easton made his way into the area before shifting the ball onto his right foot and curling beyond Thistle keeper David Mitchell. Easton continues to be one of the most exciting players in the Sins Championship. And Rovers would draw themselves level right at the death, 
Substitute Kieran Mitchell found a yard of space in the middle of the area and turned home a well-placed cutback to send the away end into raptures. A hard-fought comeback and a point apiece on the opening day. Two of last season's most improved sides met at Capilo on match day one. Morton's new signing Stephen Boyd going closest in a first half of few clear-cut chances. It would be the away side who would take the lead early into the second half. Substitute Ollie Pendlebury with a brilliant first-time finish to fire the honest men at goal up. The new signing from Aldershot Town endearing himself to the air support on his league debut. Morton would pull themselves back level just after the hour mark. Robbie Crawford turning smartly on the edge of the box before curling one beyond air keeper Charlie Albinson. A fine finish and a goal which swung the momentum back in favour of the home side. Dougie Emery's side were handed a golden opportunity to take the lead just 15 minutes from the end. Sean McGinty brought George Oakley down in the area and referee Matthew McDermott pointed straight to the spot. Last season's top scorer for Morton, Robbie Muirhead, stepped up and dispatched the penalty with confidence. Ten league goals for Muirhead last term. He will no doubt be keen to match or better that tally in 23-24. And the scoring would be complete just three minutes from time. Stephen Boyd latching onto a well-placed cross from the right and turning the ball home on the volley. Three one and a welcome return to league action for Morton. Billy Mackay recently became Cali Thistle's all-time leading goalscorer. He went close early on against Queen's Park, with this effort whistling just wide of the post. Queen's Park took the lead just after 30 minutes. The Spiders capitalised on some slack play at the back from Cali, with Dom Thomas providing a thumping finish to nudge the away side in front. A brilliant goal from a player who has recently committed his future to the Southsiders until 2025. Billy Mackay would once again go close for the Cali Jags, this time denied by a brilliant reflex save from 16-year-old Queen's Park goalkeeper Callan McKenna. The Spiders doubled their advantage early in the second half, once again capitalising on loose play at the back from Cali Thistle. This time Cali not fully clearing the lines from across, with Tommy Robson eventually finishing beyond Mark Ridgers. A fine finish from the fullback, who continues to be a fan favourite in Glasgow. Young McKenna showed his quality once again on the hour mark, this time denying Cali sub Keith Bray in a 1v1 situation. The hosts would pull a goal back before full time. Jake Davidson, the man able to head home from a corner kick against his former club. 2-1 the final score, with Queen's Park's young goalkeeper grabbing the headlines. Dunfermline faced familiar foes Airdrie on their return to the Championship. Summer signing Ewan Otto came close to opening the scoring early on. The Diamonds would also threaten in the early going. Joshua Connor was brought down near the Pars penalty area, with Dunfermline defender Rhys Breen receiving a booking. And Airdrie almost scored from the resulting free kick, Harrison Sharp being forced into a smart save to deny Charlie Telfer. The away side would take the lead in the 22nd minute, Telfer once again threatening from the outside of the box. This time his shot crashed off the bar 
with defender Craig Watson nodding in on the follow-up. Airdrie up and running in their return to the second tier. The lead didn't last long however, Dunfermline levelled the score shortly after with Ewan Otto heading home from a looping Josh Edwards cross to the back post. Otto feeling right at home at East End after making his lone switch from Celtic a permanent one over the summer. It would take until the 65th minute for the game to have its next goal but it was well worth the wait. Pars midfielder Paul Allen unleashing a wicked curling effort into the top corner to give his side the lead. Not a bad way to get your first goal for the club. Dunfermline would be forced to play the final portion of the match with 10 men as Rhys Breen saw red for a second bookable offence on 77 minutes. Airdrie pushed for a late equaliser, but the Pars hung on for an impressive home victory. A quick look at the Singe Championship table after match day one. Dundee United sit top of the tree after their fabulous away display at Gayfield. Morton, Dunfermline and Queen's Park sit second, third and fourth after opening day victories. A point apiece sees Partick Thistle and Wraith Rovers in mid-table, while Airdrieonians, Inverness, Air United and Arbroath make up 7th to 10th, having all tasted defeat in their opening fixtures. Campbell back to Fleming. Who goes route one. There's Donaldson. Good header from Donaldson. Hooper able to bring it down and gives it away to Ross McKeever. McKeever up against Fleming. Oh, and he just makes the wrong decision, Ross McKeever. For all the Falkirk haven't threatened too much, you have to credit Ann and they've sat and defended really well. Spencer. Shimmy's one way in, crosses in, there's Ross McKeever! And Falkirk are off the mark for the 23-24 Cinch League One campaign. Ross McKeever gets his fourth Falkirk goal. Another poacher's finish. Welcome back to the fold, Freden Nesbitt, who is getting his final instructions. He is stripped and ready to come on. Hopefully he's able to add something to this match. Morrison! Oh! Callum Morrison! That is outrageous! Oh, what a goal! Callum Morrison from 20 yards! Curls one beyond Greg Fleming! Here's McKeever. Donaldson looks for the pass inside to Aguman, but it eventually comes from McKeever. Slips it through to Morrison, who cuts inside. Callum Morrison, good save from Fleming. There's Aguman. Nesbitt! Aidan Nesbitt! Back from injury, back on the park, back scoring goals. Falkirk, three to the good on the opening day. Substitutes paying dividends for John McGlynn's side. The Dunhamers started their league season at home to Alloa and they got off to the perfect start with Kieran McKechnie opening the scoring just two minutes in. McKechnie smartly rounded Alloa keeper Ogai before rolling the ball into the far corner. Alloa responded quickly though with former Queen's defender David Mackay stroking the ball home to level the game just four minutes later. A quick response and a sign of things to come in this high scoring match. A misplaced pass from Queen's skipper Josh Todd gave Bradley Rodden a golden opportunity to add his name to the score sheet after a quarter of an hour, a chance which he took with aplomb. Rodden's first league goal of the season, but it wouldn't be his last of the afternoon. Alloa went 3-1 up just before the half hour mark. Connor Salmon this time, his excellent header finding the bottom corner of Gordon Bottrell's goal. Last season's top scorer for the Wasps with a fine finish to open his 23-24 account. 
Queens would get the chance to pull a goal back just before the break after Josh Todd was brought down by a clumsy challenge from Mikko Vertinen in the box. Gavin Riley stepped up to the plate and confidently tucked away his 99th professional goal. A fine penalty kick from the Palmerston favourite. But before the half-time interval, Alwa would restore their three-goal lead. Bradley Rodden was at it again, this time receiving a pass from Stefan Skugel before firing one beyond Botterill in the Queen's net. An opening day double for the Wasps forward, could he be one to watch this season? Queens would be handed another chance from the spot late in the second half. This time, Andy Graham punished for an alleged handball in the area. Unsurprisingly, Gavin Riley stepped up once again and smashed the ball home for his 100th senior goal. A landmark day for Riley, but the points were heading back to Club Manager. Aki's welcomed fellow relegation stricken Cove Rangers to Lanarkshire on match day one. Kevin O'Hara forcing a good save from Cove keeper Demas here. Demas was called into action once again shortly after, this time stopping Dylan Tate's shot, which was heading for the bottom corner. Ackies would find the breakthrough in fortuitous circumstances on the 33rd minute, Jamie Borjonas' low driven cross being turned into his own net by Cove defender Josh Kerr. Fortunate yes, but a just reward for Aki's attacking play early on. Jamie Burjonas went close with an effort of his own in the second half, this curling shot going just wide of the goal. Cove midfielder Paul McGowan received a straight red card on the 82nd minute for an off the ball incident spotted by the referee. Cove pushed for a late equaliser but Aki stood firm to secure all three points. Montrose kicked off their campaign at home to a new look Kelty Hearts side. Paul Watson, the first Montrose player to test Kyle Gurley in the Kelty goal. The goal mouth action would liven up in the second half. Lewis Moore curling this one just wide after some patient play from Kelty. Montrose had the ball in the net on the 62nd minute but referee Dan McFarlane spotted a foul in the area as the corner was being taken. It was the away side who found the breakthrough with 20 minutes to play. After a scramble in the Montrose penalty area, Lewis Moore was able to force the ball home and give his side the lead on the road. A goal for the winger on his league debut for the Maroon Machine. Kelty would make it 2-0 on the 84th minute. Botti Biabi the scorer this time, arriving late into the box and poking the ball beyond Cameron Gill. Kelty seemed to have carried their positive form from the Viaplay Cup into the league campaign. The Mole fought to pull a goal back late on, but a fabulous double save from Gourley denied the home side any consolation. 2-0 the final score. Stirling will be keen to make a splash on their return to Cinch League 1. They thought they'd taken the lead against Edinburgh City through this header from Adam Cummins, only to be ruled out for a foul in the build-up. Ryan Shanley had a golden opportunity to put City ahead on 36 minutes, denied only by a brilliant player curry save. 
The second half saw Sterling push hard for the opener. This Jack Leach curler going just wide of the mark. Dale Carrick will no doubt be a key player in attack for the Beatles this season, though he was unable to direct this header on target. The game's opening goal would come in spectacular fashion. Cammy Clark wrong-footing Andrew McNeil between the Edinburgh posts with this well-struck free kick. A brilliant goal, well worthy of winning any game. City pushed hard for an equaliser late on. Paul McLean denying Kieran offered his first goal for the citizens with a dramatic goal line clearance. 1-0 the final score at Fourth Bank. Here's how the Cinch League 1 table looks after those opening encounters. Falkirk sit top of the table on day one and fans of the Bairns will hope that John McGlynn's men have the staying power to remain there till the final day in May. Kelty Hearts, Alloa and Hamilton Ackies fill the playoff spots after 90 minutes of action while Stirling Albion will be buoyed by their positive start. Five sides head into the second round of fixtures looking to get off the mark in what is set to be a really competitive division. Now that's that's brought a that's brought a massive a massive wealthy experience. But here we go. That's um, Hamish Ritchie who's broke away on their left hand flank again. And Easton beats Kieran Shanks to that. He's scuffling the box. Then Shanks ended up with a long range effort oh. rattled off the crossbar. And it's, it's been cleared out for a corner by Liam Newton. That was a wee bit of shaky defending there from his five, but we seem to have gotten out of it. We need to defend the set piece now. Not to be a wee head. Not to be a wee head collision there, but the referee says no, and they're away again. It's a head knock, that should be stopped. Dirty Ritchie. And Fleming having to make a wonder save. I think you're, you're spot on the rules. Do save there's a head knock. The play should be stopped there and then. It's a, it's a big run from well Stark in there. It appears it was a good challenge from Newton. Slack though. And here comes Kieran Shanks on edge of the area. It's a ball in and it's in the back of the net. Been tucked away by Jack Brown, the scorer when we played Peterhead back in April at Balmour in 2022. Tucks it away again to put Peterhead 1 0 up after 35 minutes of play. Oh, that looked like a, that looked like a bad one through the back of him, but he's, he's got the ball with it, I believe. And here's a breakaway. Oh. Brian Easton's caught out, and as a two on one here, O'Keefe looking for the square, or is he going to go his own or his cell? He's, oh. he's went on his own, and Conor O'Keefe slotted it past the keeper. Peter Head doubled their advantage after 65 minutes on the clock here. Oh, here we go, Keith lets another shot away. And that has burst the net. That's an absolutely fantastic strike from O'Keefe. That gives him a brace on the day. That's two for that's two for O'Keefe. And that is three for Peter Head, unfortunately. It looks like there's three goals and three points going back to Balmour tonight, unfortunately. There's Jarvis. It's a loose one there. And now here come the Suns with Ruth out wide. Options are plenty in the middle. Ops to find his man on the edge of the box. It's a deflected effort that finds the back of the net. Ryan Blair with Dumbarton's first goal of the season. Lays out and off for Peggy. Here's Mela. Miguel loves that one in for Faye at the back post. And he forces Long to get down and make a good save. And Bonner grows after showing an aerial threat. They will look to do something similar from the corner. He's come all the way to the back for Kerr Young. Leaves off for Martin Newcand. Brett Long called into action again. And it comes from Jarvis to Martin Newcand at the back post. That one cannons off of the back post. Here's Houghton, slots Ruth in behind, who's broken away. Options in the box. Miguel diverts it only as far as Houghton. And Bonnery Groves able to get away with it there. And Ruth gets the break of the ball there. It's McLean. And for Ruth, and what a save from Paddy Martin. Cannons off of the defender and Mahadi's in behind here. Big chance, cuts on his right. It's Mahadi and he finds the back of the net. Bonnie Rigg just like that. 
Luke Mahadi on the field for a matter of moments. And a big moment for him as first ball in a Groves goal. And he receives the acclaim of the fans behind the goal. A massive goal. Ainsley Park witnessed a piece of history as Spartans made their SPFL debut against Clyde. Cammy Russell almost marked the occasion with the opener, but his effort was pushed away for a corner. After playoff pain last year, Clyde were keen to show they mean business, and they made the breakthrough as Martin Rennie nodded home John Craig's cross to silence the home crowd. Spartans looked to respond quickly through Jamie Dishington, but James Cragen couldn't find the target for this cutback. The hosts never gave up hope, and they got the reward with 20 minutes remaining. Rhys Armstrong sent Dishington free down the left, and he made no mistake to net Spartans' first SPFL league goal. Armstrong came closest to snatching a winner, but Neil Parry got enough on his shot to ensure both sides emerged with a point. Strumrar made the long journey up to Elgin for their League 2 opener, and they started brightly. Lovely play down the right saw Sean McIntosh link up with Tam Orr, whose low cross was just begging to be tapped home. The Blues came close to taking the lead on 16 minutes. James Dolan's free kick met the head of Craig Ross, who nodded onto and over the crossbar. Strunrar would make the breakthrough just a short while later. More great work from Tam Orr, this time forcing a smart save from Tom McHale, with James Dolan ghosting in to slot home the rebound. The Blues on their way to a happy journey back to Strunrar. It was a game of few chances, and this was arguably the best of the second half. Nice work from Strenrard down the left, with the ball making its way to Dolan once again. He shimmied past the defender, but his shot couldn't find the mark. 1-0 the final score. Only two losses in 12 career games against Steny Mark McCallum, but only three clean sheets in those doesn't conceded over a goal a game and that's already been Farfar's issue this season and there's an effort and a good one at that and you know there was a few muted shouts there but it looked like that challenge might have been in the box or certainly on the line but Stenny needs to get into defence mode now and it's all the way across for Ross can he add to it he absolutely came very close. He did come very, very close. A good save. The break could be on here. Kirkpatrick finds Brown. He's got two men over. Anderson's at the back post. And he was spotted. Kirkpatrick out to Brown. Crashes the post. A costly error that could cost their side all three points on this opening day as it can just do so much but here's the chance and what a stop that is at point blank range and that could have been it <laughs>